If you open any school manual, you will see that ancient Greece, Rome, and Egypt are described as highly intelligent civilizations that have made a huge contribution to the development of human culture. Furthermore, they form the fundamental principles of politics, philosophy, art, architecture, and many other fields that still influence the modern world. Today, we have prepared a collection of facts that you will never find in textbooks because it simply shocks a modern person. Even before Hippocrates managed to shake the world of medicine upside down, all diseases were treated exclusively by prayer in ancient Greece. It is also important to remember that everything that happened in a person's life, including diseases, was explained by the will of the gods, which means that only the gods could heal the sick person. Hippocrates made a huge leap in the field of medicine. In fact, he showed people how to take different tests. As you can guess, there was no equipment at that time, and therefore Hippocrates simply tasted urine and earwax to determine what the patient was sick with. This is what he taught his followers. The ancient Olympic Games were one of the most prestigious and important sporting events in ancient Greece. At that time, people weren't bothered about the uniforms, so all the participants performed naked. Their bodies were lubricated with special oils. Women did not participate in the Olympic Games. In addition, the competitions were held in mud, and by the end of the Olympic Games, all the participants were dirty and looked disgusting. Slaves collected this sweaty, dirty mixture into bottles and sold it. It was believed that she was able to heal from various diseases. In ancient Greece, the idea of personal hygiene methods was very different from modern standards. At the time, hygiene skills and access to clean water were limited, and people used the available means to meet their needs. In ancient Greece, as in many other ancient civilizations, there was no toilet paper, as we used to see in modern toilets. Instead, the Greeks used various methods for hygienic cleaning after the toilet. One of the most common methods was special sponges called caps. These sponges were usually made of soft and porous materials such as moss, sponge, or scraps of soft fabric. After use, the cap was washed and used again. Another method was the use of stones or ordinary pieces of ceramics, which were previously rinsed with water before use. Women in ancient Greece were considered second class, so when they got sick, they were treated only in the most extreme cases. At the same time, their medicines were not that great. It was believed that many ailments could be cured with the help of cow excrement. Girls were married between the ages of 12 and 14, while the husband was about 30 to 35. This means that the husband was more than twice his wife's age. Of course, the girl's desire was not taken into account under such circumstances, which once again confirms that only slaves were lower than women on the social ladder. The Feast of Dionysus was one of the most famous and popular holidays in ancient Greece. Dionysus is the god of wine and fertility. This holiday was accompanied by huge and cheerful ceremonies, theatrical performances, and festive celebrations. The phallus was considered a symbol of fertility, so the figures of the phallic shape of different sizes could be seen everywhere. Ancient Greece was the cradle of democracy, philosophy, and science, but despite this, the Greeks loved to fight. Ordinary citizens took part in the war. In other words, even a farmer had to fight if he was born in Greece between 800 and 500 years BC. And if you lived in Greece in the 7th century BC, you could be sentenced to death even for stealing cabbage. People were executed for anything, and it was not necessary to prove the guilt. Even suspicion or denunciation of neighbors could be quite enough.
Between the 4th and 5th centuries BC, 60 to 80,000 slaves lived in Athens. In other words, it was more than half of the population. There were at least three slaves in each house. Women of ancient Greece applied cosmetics with lead on their faces. Lead paste often leads to deformities and scars. Despite this, some men also used such cosmetics to emphasize facial features. Gladiatorial fights were a bloody yet popular form of entertainment in ancient Rome. They were associated with religious rites and rituals of worship of the gods. The Romans believed that the blood of gladiators had healing properties, and the more cruelly a gladiator was killed, the more power his blood possessed. Several Roman texts mention that the audience was in a hurry to collect the gladiator's blood after the fight. If women in ancient Rome were forced to cover their bodies, then men proudly put their dignity on display. Moreover, it was believed that phallic symbols protect from evil spirits and bring good luck. Therefore, it was customary to carry small figures of them as a talisman. Many rulers of ancient Rome were mentally ill. For example, Emperor Caligula is famous for his madness and eccentricity. His reign was marked by unjustified violence and strange whims. One day Caligula appointed his horse Incitatus to be the consul of the Roman Empire. Another example is the Emperor Nero, who was also known for his eccentricity and relentless nature. His reign was full of massive repressions, including the persecution of the Christians. In ancient Rome, keeping this promise was considered not just a matter of honor, but a matter of life and death. The fact is that for an unfettered promise, a man could be absolutely legally executed. In general, the Roman legal system was quite strange and cruel. The most terrible crime was considered to be the murder of a member of one's family. For doing this, a person was taken to prison where a bag with a monkey, a rooster, a snake, and a dog were waiting for him. The Romans were obsessed with the desire to look good and smell delicious, but they had their own way of achieving this. Instead of washing off the dirt, they simply rubbed the body with aromatic oils. What a twist! Haven't you expected to see this either, have you? All servants and even pets were buried together with the pharaohs. Nowadays it may seem wild, but do not forget that the Egyptians had a peculiar attitude towards death. They considered death not the end, but only a transition, so the servants had to continue their service in the afterlife. It's hard to believe, but modern contraceptives have evolved since ancient Egypt. Even then, people were trying to control the birth rate. That's just the ways were very strange. The Egyptians believed that a mixture of honey and crocodile droppings helps prevent unwanted pregnancy. This mixture was smeared in intimate places. It's unlikely that this remedy was effective, although such a mixture could really spoil the romantic mood. The fertility festival in ancient Egypt played a huge role in the cultural and religious life of this ancient civilization. It was devoted to the god called Atum. During fertility festivals, Atum was invoked and revered to ensure harvest and well-being in agriculture. These festivals often included religious rites and sacrifices to the gods, including prayers and magical practices, in order to receive a blessing from Atum. The male participants threw off their clothes. It was believed that this would contribute to a good harvest. As a rule, experienced embalmers had to work a lot immediately after death, but if an attractive woman departed to another world, it was forbidden to touch her for three days. Why? The answer to this question is really shocking. The fact is that embalmers, 
Fascinated by the beauty of the deceased, often could not control themselves, so it was decided to let them near the body only when it began to decompose. One ancient medical text written on papyrus says about a very strange remedy for baldness. The Egyptians had to make a lot of sacrifices for the sake of magnificent hair. They had to cook a greyhound's leg together with donkey hooves just to smear the head with this mixture. They also used the fat of hippos, crocodiles, snakes, cats, and geese. In addition, they asked for help from the god of the sun and drank a mixture of onion soup, iron, and alabaster. To be honest, it's not clear why the Egyptians struggled so much with baldness. After all, there was another huge problem of having the hair. I'm talking about lice. It was impossible to get rid of them in ancient Egypt, except to get a bald haircut. Both men and women cut their hair bald, and women preferred to wear wigs as a convenient alternative to their own hair. During religious holidays, when people gathered together for spiritual practices, the men of ancient Egypt could not resist the disgusting harassment of women. Herodotus tells about this fact in his writings. People together with their families boarded boats and headed to the holy city of Bubasis. However, their journey was not focused solely on spirituality, because passing through the city, they shamelessly shouted and molested women. And the end of the holiday wasn't that sacred or holy. In ancient Egypt, people liked to have toned bodies. However, instead of dieting, the Egyptians ate what they wanted and then took laxatives. They used castor oil as a laxative. It was taken once a month to spend the whole day in the toilet. To be honest, I'm speechless after witnessing it. What about you? Another strange medicine of ancient Egypt is a powder made from mummies. The remains were carefully crushed and then used for medical purposes. Interestingly, this powder was used for a long time not only in Egypt, but also in Europe in the Middle Ages. It was believed that the powder from mummies had miraculous healing properties. In ancient Egypt, in order to preserve the purity of blood, close relatives often married each other. For example, Tutankhamun's parents were brothers and sisters. However, because of this tradition, children were often born with pathologies, which is not surprising at all nowadays, but in ancient Egypt, there was no knowledge of genetics. From the ancient Egypt papyri, we learn that they even had pregnancy tests. However, it was done in a very strange way. For several days, the women relieved themselves on wheat and barley seeds, and if they germinated, it meant that the woman was pregnant. It's difficult to judge the accuracy of this test, but the Egyptians believed it. The culture of ancient Egypt was closely connected with the afterlife, so many Egyptians engaged in necromancy. The Egyptians believed that the soul lives after death and tried to communicate with the dead. However, they believed that the soul can live only as long as the body is whole, which is why mummification was invented. In ancient Egypt, cosmetics and perfumes were made from animal fats. Flowers and various herbs were also used. The perfumes were not like modern sprays, those were solid cones of fat. Some of the culinary preferences of the Egyptians today seem not only strange, but also disgusting. For example, they loved to eat fried mice. Such a delicacy was even recommended by doctors for the treatment of various diseases. In addition, the Egyptians used cat feces as poison from rats. 
It is worth noting that the cat smell really scared off the rodents, and this suggests that in ancient Egypt, the behavior of animals was well understood. It was believed that all processes, from sunrise to the flooding of the Nile, was controlled by the gods. Various divination was a popular practice in ancient Egypt. The Egyptians searched for predictions in dreams, used the stars to predict their future, and even looked for signs of fate in feces. It may be shocking, but using feces to predict the future of people was really popular. They studied color and texture, and looked for various kinds of omens that could predict a person's fate. We're sure that our episode has impressed you. In fact, we always strive to choose the best ones for you. And we want to thank our regular subscribers and warmly welcome new ones.